Okay, good afternoon everyone. So the time is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So welcome. Thank you for joining our webinar. Um, so this is the study in Canada hosted by ACN Southern and we are um, lucky to be joined today with St. Lawrence College. All right, so let me just share my video. So hello everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, so let's begin. So our agenda for today is we will be showing you how to become an international student in Canada? And why should you choose our preferred partner school, St. Lawrence College? We have invited um, St. Lawrence College to talk about the offerings of their school, okay? Now, after we have presented our presentations, there will be a Q&A portion so that you can ask us your questions. So you can just save your questions and then type it in the chat box so that we can um, check that out after our presentations. All right, so let me begin. I am Bea Barcelona. I am a marketing specialist for ACN Southern Immigration and Education Services. Now, about ACN Southern, if this is your first time with us, welcome. So we were established in 2005. We are an immigration education consultancy. So we are offering services for three countries, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. So it's easy to remember because it's ACN, all right? So... For those three countries, we have the permanent residency visa, family, spouse, fiancé visa, study and work, and the tourist visa under Australia. For Canada, we offer the study and work to immigrate and the tourist visa. And for New Zealand, we have the same as well, the study and work and the tourist visa. But for today, we are focusing on our service to Canada. All right? So... On your screens, you will see a map of what Canada looks like. You will see the cities that they have, and this is their capital, which is Ottawa. Okay, so later on, um, if we listen to St. Lawrence College, we'll know where their school is located. All right, so um, just a bit of a trivia, okay? So Canada is actually the second largest country by total land area. And despite having such a large country, no, they only have a small population. So they have a population of less than four people per square kilometer. So they are actually, you know, they are very welcome to international students and to immigrants because onti lang yung population nila dun sa Canada. All right. So... Let me talk about the study permit. In order for you to become a student in Canada, you will have to secure a study permit, okay? So it is a document issued by the government of Canada in order for you, mga non-Canadian nationals, to study at designated learning institutions. So among um, DLI, they are actually the schools allowed by the government of Canada to host international students. Okay. I'm so sorry if medyo maingay or pangit yung aking internet. Medyo malakas yung ulan po namin dito eh. Alright. Okay. So let me talk about um, why should you choose Canada. Okay. So Canada has an outstanding quality of education. So they boast na they have around siguro 11 of the top 250 um, universities in the world. They offer one of the lowest tuition fees among English-speaking countries, so they are cheaper than the U.S., U.K., and Australia. Okay, next is they are number one in the quality of life rankings. Um, no change since their rank in 2019, pero I think they have been number one for already five years now. Okay, so you as an international student, kahit hindi ka pa permanent resident or citizen don, you can already enjoy the quality of life that the Canadians are experiencing. All right. Next is it's one of the safest countries in the world for international students. So they have very low crime rate. They have very strict gun control laws and they have very good um, community policing. Okay, so if you're an international student, of course, you're scared. It's a new country. Wala ka pa sigurong makakakilala doon. Don't worry. Canada is one of the safest countries. Okay? Finally, um, Canada is a diverse and multicultural society. In fact, they have a national policy. They have a national, um, parang meron silang law about their multiculturalism. Okay? So, you won't be the only Filipino or you won't be the only foreigner in Canada. They have a lot of international students. They have a lot of immigrants coming from other countries now. Okay? So, you won't be the only foreigner in Canada. And you will, be, um, you will feel very welcome there. Okay? 
Now, let me talk about the benefits of the study and work to immigrate program. So, even if you are only holding a study permit, you are actually allowed to work part-time. So, you're allowed to work while you study. That is 20 hours per week, okay? Next is, even if you are under a study permit, you can also bring your spouse or your partner and your dependents. So, your spouse can work full-time and then your dependents can avail of free education, all right? Next is you can apply for permanent residency while or after you study because Canada offers the most generous pathway for permanent residency. So it's easier in Canada to go from a student permit to a um, permanent residency status. All right. So let me talk about the eligibility. What are the requirements or qualifications in order for you to become a student in Canada? Okay. So... Ang um, sasabi ko lang dito is this is just a minimum requirements or the qualifications. Um, St. Lawrence might have a slightly different eligibility, okay? So first is you have to be at least 18 years old. So you have to be of legal age. You have to be at least a senior high school graduate or if you are from the old curriculum, second year college. Basta you um, umabot ka dun sa equivalent ng kanilang year 12. If you have a bachelor's degree, it's still very much welcome for you to study in Canada. Next is the English requirement. So this is done by taking the English proficiency test like IELTS, PTE, TOEFL, and the other examinations. No? So later on, um, St. Lawrence College may talk about their English requirement. Next, we have um, you must be financially capable. So you have to be ready to shoulder your cost of living and your tuition fee. All right? Next is the genuine study purpose. I will talk uh, more about this later. And then finally, in order to become a student in Canada, Canada, you have to have good health and good character. All right? So next, let me talk about the permit application process. So we, um, it's, we divided it into four stages. Okay, first is the contract signing. So, of course, this is a formal agreement with AC and Southern saying that you are getting us to be your educational consultants. You'll pay the AC and fees. We will give you the list of requirements so that we can start with your um, application. And then next, we have the study planning. So, for study planning, you have to lay out where you want to study and what you will study, okay? So for the location, later on, we will know um, what city and what province um, St. Lawrence College is located in. We will know what level of studies um, they have, if they offer certificates, diplomas, um, postgraduate um, programs. Okay? Next, you have to also determine what field of study you want to know or any course na gusto mong kunin sa Canada. All right. And then lastly, I, I mentioned this earlier, this is the purpose of study or the genuine study purpose. Now, you have to remember that a study permit is a temporary visa to Canada. Okay. So the immigration officer at the embassy will have to know your plans after your study. So you, you should always, um, it's, you should state in a letter addressed to the embassy what program you're going to take, what, which school you're going to attend to, and what will be your plans after you study. It's important to note that um, the immigration officer will check your plans after you study because you have to state there that you will be returning to the Philippines after you study. Now, we understand that some of you might use the student visa in order to, um, to go to a permanent residency pathway. We cannot state it in the letter. So, again, because you are applying for a student visa. Okay, so they are allowing you naman from student to permanent residency. We just cannot state it in the, um, in the study plan or the letter, okay? ACN will help you compose and edit the letter. We have people for that and it's included in our services. All right, so once we have your study plan all laid out, we will proceed with your admissions. So for admissions, this is the enrollment, okay? So for the enrollment, you have to fill out your enrollment forms, okay? You have to gather your requirements and then AC and Southern will be submitting your application to St. Lawrence College, okay? Now, when St. Lawrence gets your um, application, in return, they will be issuing the letter of offer or the offer letter. So in the offer letter, it will state there what program you're going to take and how much is the tuition fee. Now, for the tuition fee, 
all you have to do is pay a minimum deposit or a minimum amount to be officially enrolled. Okay, so once we pay the um, tuition fee deposit, St. Lawrence College will now issue the official enrollment document or what we also call the letter of acceptance. And that is the last document we need so that we can start your permit application. Okay. So in the permit application, kasi, it is required that you have to be enrolled to a school in Canada first before you can apply for your permit. Okay. So in this application, you as the applicant will have to fill out your application forms, gather your requirements, undergo health examination biometrics, and then ACN Southern will be submitting your permit application. Okay. And then all we have to do now is wait for your permit decision. All right. So um, the whole application from, um, from ACN contract to the permit application, it can be done in a span of three months. So maigsi lang naman ang um, processing ng study permit. Um, pero of course, with the situation that's happening right now, uh, medyo natatagalan lang tayo pagdating sa kuha ng ating mga requirements and also waiting for the permit decision from the um, embassy. Okay, but don't worry, um, they are still, Canada is still accepting um, application for student visa. But of course, we really recommend um, you to take intake dates or you to start your study plans in Canada for 2021. But as early as now, we encourage you then to start your application since it's already September. So if we're going to take three to four months to apply for your visa, um, the earliest that you can take um, or the earliest that you can go to Canada is January 2021. All right. So on your screens, you will see some photos of our clients who are already in Canada. So they were sweet enough to send us their photos of when they went sightseeing or when they went um, to visit their schools. Okay. So if you want to see more of our clients who are already in their countries, you can join the Facebook group ACN Southern Immigration and Education Services Visa Recipients. To know more of our services or to um, be updated with our upcoming webinar schedules, you can also like us on Facebook. That is ACN Southern Immigration and Education Services. All right. Now, we have locations here in the Philippines. So we have four offices. Our main office is located in Makati City, but we have um, provincial offices in Angeles, Baguio, and Gapan. Now, for our contact information, you can email info at southernimmigration.com to, um, to get a copy of the expenses for the application process. And you may also email us if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one orientation with an ACN consultant. So this can be done via phone call, messenger, Zoom, Google Meet, or Skype. All right. So again, our email address, info at southernimmigration.com. All right, so that ends my part of the presentation. Now, um, I would like to introduce our partner school, St. Lawrence College, represented by Oliver Bata, the Philippine office manager. So, hi, Oliver. Are you there? Thank you so much for Hello. joining us. Hi, Bea. Hi, yes, uh, uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for participating in today's uh, webinar. So, uh, let me share with you my screen. So there you go. Uh, Bea, can you see my screen? Ah, uh, yes, I can see your screen, Oliver. Okay. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Oliver. I'm from St. Lawrence College. So I'm here to share with you some information about our institution. So we are a public school and we are a designated learning institution, meaning all our programs are eligible for the P or the postgraduate work permit, which is the fastest uh, way for a student to acquire a PR. So we're located in between Toronto and Montreal. Uh, we, uh, we have three campuses. Uh, one is in Kingston, 
which is two and a half hours away from Toronto and two hours away from Ottawa and three hours away from Montreal. Another campus, which is in Brockville, which is the closest to Ottawa. It's about an hour away from uh, Ottawa, just like what Bea mentioned earlier. Ottawa is the uh, capital of Canada. And lastly, our, our campus in Cornwall, which is the closest to Montreal and uh, Ottawa as well, and about four and a half hours away from Toronto. So this is our campus in Brockville. It is located in the world famous 1000 Islands region. So you'll find there the 1000 Islands boat tours, and then you also find there the Brockville Art Center, the Brockville Railway Tunnel, which is Canada's oldest tunnel, and uh, and uh, and uh, Saint Lawrence Park Beach uh, area. And then this is our campus in Cornwall, which is located in the on the Saint Lawrence uh, on the shores of the Saint Lawrence River. So students can enjoy studying or lounging by the river and enjoy the water views from the library, residence, and classrooms. So one good thing about our campus in Cornwall, recently uh, it has been included in the OINP or the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program. So this allows the government of Ontario to nominate individuals for immigration to Ontario. So basically OINP is one of the uh, most, uh, most uh, dy dynamic uh, of Canada's provincial nominee program. So basically they, they, they uh, it's the easiest way to immigrate to Canada and uh, Canada grants the right to, to its provinces to invite skilled people and nominate them for immigrating to the country based on the occupation in demands and labor, uh, labor market requirement in that province. So being a small sized uh, city, so yun yung naghahanap sila ng tao, so basically they, they uh, yung naghahanap lang mga skilled workers, uh, graduates, and business migrants. And lastly, this is our campus in Kingston. So it's located in a mid-sized community, uh, which is safe, friendly, and affordable. And then it's also located in a beautiful waterfront that offers uh, outdoor activities and urban amenities for an active student lifestyle. So this is a photo of the campus, which I took myself when I visited the campus last year. So, and then uh, another, another facility that has been, that is newly built, uh, which includes a brand new 80,000 square foot student life and innovation center. And then uh, it also has a student services and, and study area. So some quick facts about Kingston. Um, so it was the first capital of Canada. So prior to Ottawa, it was Kingston before the government decided to move it to Ottawa because it's uh, too close to too close to New York. Then it has a population of 170,000 and then it has, a, it has a high quality of living but a very low cost uh, in terms of cost of living. In fact, it's about 40% cheaper as compared to other major cities like uh, Vancouver, uh, Montreal, or Toronto. And then uh, there's less competition in terms of jobs. And then recently it has been named as one of the best cities in Canada for millennials to live. And then it's also known to be the hockey cradle of Canada. Then Kingston is also known to be the, a college or university town. So uh, you'll find there uh, among others, aside from St. Lawrence College, you'll find there the Queen's University, the Royal Military College, and the Limestone District School Board. Uh, having said, that, uh, as we all know, being a university town, the cost of living has to be uh, catered to the students. So these are some of the facilities that we offer. So we have our multimedia classes, we have our carpentry classes, our esthetician and our hairstyling classes, our health and science, then we also have our applied arts, our automotive, we have our welding and fabrication technician. And uh, the ones I've mentioned are our skilled trades programs. 
uh, as you all know, skilled trades programs are the most in demand and the highest paying jobs in Canada right now. And then we have our library, our top of the line libraries, uh, which can be we are. Uh, which can be found in all three campuses. So we have there our experienced staff who can who are available to help you find the information and uh, who who will help you complete the your assignments or the uh, research and other interests. And then we all we have our uh, ex we have our excellent athletic facilities, which includes a cardio room, a weight room, and uh, our gymnasium. Uh, it features one of the nicest basketball courts in Ontario. And then we offer our, uh, our student services. So among others, we have our student association. So basically students can hang out here and interact with other students and even with uh, faculties during their, their break time. And they can play uh, billiards and table tennis among others. And then we offer our counseling and accessibility services. So basically, uh, students they encounter uh, they encounter uh, whenever they encounter stress when they're overwhelmed with academic, personal, or financial concerns. So we have our counselors here who can assist them, and then they can do uh, confidential personal counseling. And then this is available in all three campuses. And then we have our campus health center, which is available uh, to all to all campuses as well. Uh, so basically, students can just make appointments with uh, physici uh, physicians and nurses um, anytime. And then we have our academic support center. So basically, the academic support center is a free service that's available for one-on-one -on -one or group tutoring sessions. Uh, which is on a drop-in basis or even by appointments. Then we also offer our Kingston Transit. We, uh, so already included in the tuition fee is the bus pass, uh, wherein students can just ride the, the buses anytime for free. And then we also have, uh, also included in the tuition fee is the health insurance. So we have our, uh, the guard me insurance, so students can just use this uh, anytime whenever they feel anything, they can just uh, consult the doctors and then they can just visit the clinic anytime. Then we also offer our SLC carpool program uh, where students can sign up with other students uh, and even with faculties. And then just like what Bea mentioned earlier, in terms of diversity, uh, Canada being a very diverse uh, country this college itself has about 45 countries uh representing it so currently we uh so the the entire student population is about 8000 1500 of which are international students and then currently we have more than 30 filipino students and we're still trying to grow that number and then in terms of the uh, KPI or the key performance indicators. Uh, we normally belong to the top three in terms of the graduate employment rate and the employer satisfaction rate. This due to the fact that the school itself, we have our own placement center, which we call the SLC Career Services. So basically, uh, it offers a variety of in-person and online resources, uh, which includes resume and cover letter assistance, uh, interview preparation, and job search coaching. So we have our career advisors that uh, works with you to discuss your career goals and and uh, plan and they plan to get you to uh, to your chosen uh, employers. So we also uh, we also hold uh, re regular job fairs and then we have our job boards with hundreds of opportunities in Ontario. So these are just some of the partner companies that we have tie-ups with. So we have more than uh, 70 programs that are being offered to our international students, ranging from a one-year certificate programs. So among the more popular programs here are our personal support worker, our medical laboratory assistant technician, 
and uh, our culinary skills. Then we have our two-year diploma programs, which is the most popular among Filipinos. Uh, well, as you all know, if you uh, pursue a two-year pro uh, two program, you get to stay for another three years for your work permit. So among the more popular programs here, our business programs, our computer systems technicians, our early childhood education for the education graduates, uh, our mental wellness and addiction worker for uh, psychology graduates. Then we have our health and science programs. Then we have hospitality. Uh, we have the culinary management, hospitality per se, and tourism programs, which is popular among Filipino students. And like I mentioned earlier, we have our skilled trades programs. Then we also have our three-year advanced diploma programs. So among the more popular programs here are the behavioral science, the civil engineering technology, and the biotechnology advanced. And then we only have one four-year bachelor degree program, which is the Bachelor of Business Administration. And lastly, we have our postgraduate programs, which is uh, quite popular uh, among Filipino students since uh, most Filipino uh, applicants are already degree holders. So we offer uh, like business analytics, we have digital marketing communications, and then we have Healthcare Administration International, which is the, the most popular for nursing graduates. And then we have our project management, supply chain management. Uh, these two programs are, are being offered in our Cornwall campus. And then we have our autism and behavioral science for psychology graduates and our therapeutic recreation for our PT graduates. So as for tuition fee, um, most diploma programs, or almost all programs, uh, they range from fifteen to sixteen thousand. Um, it's actually it's about seven thousand three hundred per semester plus the ancillary fees. And then for the graduate and uh, graduate programs, it's around sixteen thousand as well. So we're waiving the uh, ACN being our partner partner agency. We're waiving the hundred Canadian dollar application fee. Now, as for the admission requirements, uh, we're already waiving the English requirement or IELTS. So as of this year, uh, we don't, uh, we no longer require IELTS or other English English proficiency exams. So basically, we would just uh, need the following documents from you: so a copy of your passport, uh, a college diploma, your college transcript of records, and your resume. And with that, I'll leave you, uh, I'll share with you this short clip about St. Lawrence. What I love about St. Lawrence College is everything, like the facilities that they give you and the friends that you'll make and the overall experience is top notch. Student life at SLC is amazing because there's so many opportunities, there's so many services that they offer, they have career services, they offer different activities, they have the uh, student association has so many things going on for us every day. We're a small campus but we have the biggest heart. I think that just brings this collectiveness of all of us being together as one. I had to describe my SLC experience in one word, it would be awesome, different. Great, exciting, life affirming, diversity, wonderful thing, friendly. So there, so we're currently accepting applications for our winter intake, uh, which is the January 2021, uh, and then we also have our off cycle intake this November for five of our programs. So. Thank you so much. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, I'm here to, to answer all your questions. So Bea, thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Oliver. All right. So everyone, uh, we will now go on to our question and answer. So if you have any questions, please put it in the group chat and then Oliver and I will be answering those questions.